right. Welcome, everyone. Um, welcome to another uh, contribution workshop. I just want to go over a quick thing before we get started. We have the um, Open SUSE Conference that's going to be coming up in June, as well as the uh, uh, Community Summit that we're having in Berlin alongside, uh, or at least on the last day of SUSECON. So if you are interested in attending that or participating, just go to events.opensuse.org. And so I'm going to go ahead and bring on Santi, and uh, we can get started. Welcome, Santi. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming. Um, Thank you. Going to be going over uh, sort of automated testing and and how people can use uh, open source technology and tools to uh, yeah mm -hmm. find bugs and things like that. Yeah. So take it over. Awesome. Um, wait a second. Perfect. Uh, now, hi. Um, thanks again, Doug and Open Source Community for giving me the spot here. Um, I might be monitoring the chat from time to time, so if you have questions, uh, I might be able to follow up. Uh, and right now, what I am going to do is share from my screen. Um, so there is really not much. I uh, I just want to go through over through a few things. Um, because when it comes to testing, uh, I always like to talk about something that is called the Deming cycle. Um, so Edward Demings is considered the father of quality. Um, and he was always promoting a, what is called the PDSA cycle, which is you first need to plan what you're going to do, uh, then you actually execute it, um, you study, and then you act. Uh, and each one of those phases have their, um, each one of those phases have uh, specific steps that you can take. Sometimes you find it, you find the S uh, exchange with an, uh, with a C uh, for check. But the emphasis that Deming does is that, um, so when when you have it on check, uh, when people are doing a, a plan, do check, act, they are usually focusing on the outcome. Uh, whatever we're doing, is it? Uh, are we um, are we able to execute the application? Are we able to deliver to, I don't know, uh, to finish building this thing? Are we able to ship it? While in this, while when it comes to study, uh, and what he proposes is to try to predict what is going to happen. Uh, what happens if my application is not properly starting? What does what kind of message does the user get? Um, how am I interacting, or how is the user interacting that we get such a uh, uh, such behavior and and so on and so forth, and um, this is kind of the entry point for for today's contribution workshop because sometimes it happens that uh, somebody sits down and they try using an, a, a new application or even they want to test a new feature, and it happens that they might not know. Uh, how to approach that, how do I, what is a test plan, how do I build a test plan. Um, but this is this is more or less the the starting point that you want to have. You, so we, we, we kind of start planning what is going to be the execution. Uh, and here, I think, exactly. So uh, you start to plan your execution, you figure out for how long uh, your testing is going to be. And at this point, I'm just talking, um, I'm just talking about exploratory testing only. Um, so we plan the execution. Uh, let, let's make a note here, bananas, because why not? So the first thing 
is how long what we are going to do uh, and then uh, who do I talk to uh, so these are kind of basic questions that you usually can uh, that that you that, that you basically can have bef right before entering into a, in, into a session like for exploring something um, and then from there on you you kind of start to build up uh, and here uh, there is this thing called um, exploratory test charter so there are different prompts that you can use there are different ways how you can uh, how you can build it um, but um, one that I find super easy to start with is I want to explore this uh, with so I want to explore explore thing with this thing to discover blah and we have few examples here. Uh, in this case, um, I want to explore uh, possibilities of the HTTP services to discover uh, networking domains, domain service capabilities. Um, I want to explore, and here we are talking about uh, specific features uh, so I want to, 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 to see what are the, the capabilities of um, uh, mail service capabilities of post postfix to discover how to send an email. Um, and then uh, from there on, you can start kind of building uh, based on what you're seeing uh, different things. So for he uh, around here, we are having uh, different ideas like after after kind of uh, going into that um, into that study part uh, of the deming cycle uh, hey uh, how does the search work uh, can I uh, set up the the reservations uh, can I assign static IPs um, so when uh, now more and more, for instance, we are talking about transactional systems uh, or immutable, immutable systems, uh, whichever term you want to use. But I want to use um, I want to explore the user management uh, to to see if users uh, can be created or deleted uh, on such a system. Um, I know that. Uh, Richard is working hard on Aion right now, and uh, I think there is a user migration uh, capability even, or something uh, something like that I read on Twitter. So uh, that is also something that you can decide how to explore it, and then start to build. Mm. And the great thing is that um, it doesn't just uh, it doesn't just end on uh, on software you can also and here I'm going to uh, switch to my VM uh, here this is a very old uh, tumbleweed machine that I have I just updated it and if I remember the password, uh, it happens that you can also explore documentation. Uh, and that's exactly what I did. So I was going uh, right before through the OpenQA setup, uh, setup part. I was able to get the OpenQA um, a container, a container running. A, and I found a couple of things. I'm not going to focus on that right now. Uh, but the main part here is um, 
that uh, when it comes to making sure that whatever it's being built and whatever you, are, uh, you, you want to deliver, you not only need to check whether the um, whether the application works, but also whether the app, whether the documentation is also matching whatever the application is uh, supposed to do. Um, now, um, I think the container is running. Uh, so let's see if I can get an OpenQI container. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the next question is, uh, is my OpenQI session or is my OpenQI running? Yes. So uh, I use the OpenQI uh, boot bootstrap bootstrap script it is running uh, we have also the openqa opensuse org instance which is the one that i'm going to blatantly uh, clone from um, and this is the main thing that we are using to make sure that uh, most things that we are releasing kind of work uh, and I say kind of because of course we are not able to test everything um, you more or less know the drill uh, you've seen it uh, you've seen it live you need you you, you might uh, have even uh, been to some of our um, to so some of our previous workshops or have learned about it in the open source conference. So for now, uh, what I'm going to do is I I just went through the latest build. Um, and right now I am interested in taking a look at the, so we have a couple of modules. So there is this boot to desktop, which is basically going to get you there on a on a desktop system and uh, in this case this is put to snapshot but that's not um, what I'm going to be look uh, looking at today I want to say for instance so I know more or less already how this goes but uh, when you when you are here on the on, on at the top uh, I know that we have a module name I know that we have test for GIMP for Vim but we also have test for GIMP and in this case I want to see how the GIMP test works and we see that it's quite uh, very straightforward there are uh, only three uh, options being called so we want to make sure that it's installed we start an x11 program and uh, what you have here is a maximum timeout for how long we are going to wait until uh, how long we are going to wait until uh, we consider the test failed and in the end what we are what we are going to what this does is basically internally it's going to check mm, let me duplicate this tab um, so internally this is going to be checking whether GIMP uh, has started is checking a needle and uh, so it's checking for a, reg a region here and what uh, we are trying to do is basically we have one tag and then we have multiple versions of the same uh, 
uh, screen. And, and this is how, I don't know, it changes because of different desktop environments and so on and so forth. So right now, uh, the test case is pretty straightforward, fairly simple. However, I would like to uh, try and do something else because I know that. Um, so one thing, for instance, is that we are not checking. Uh, we, we don't even know what ki what version do we have. Um, so uh, because right now. I don't have installed GIMP, so let's do that in the background. So let's go there. Now, the main reason why I am installing GIMP on, on this VM, because I also want to understand how does it behave, I cannot uh, I cannot test something that uh, I haven't tried myself. So in this case, um, while there is the cloning uh, happening, uh, sorry, uh, in this case, what is the, while there is the installation happening, um, I'm going to come back to my OpenQA uh, um, systemd container. This one that I started at the beginning and see if in var if openqa tests do I have the tests? So it looks like yes. So So as you see, um, well, there is this ownership part, so we can do this, and then a And then life is good. Uh, so this is a pretty much default configuration. You can then add your SSH keys and, and all of this uh, here. But right now, uh, the first thing, uh, if we come back to the charter, uh, I, sh I should have Kate here. Let's open a new field, a new file. Uh, and I want to Uh, I want to explore so I want to explore GIMP uh, with common line options um, so this is the uh, exploratory test charter, so to speak, that I want to use. And maybe let's have, let's give it like not too much time. So uh, let's give it something like five minutes of exploration. Uh, let's give it five, minu uh, five minutes of exploration. And then on top of that, I also want to I want to write down the interesting options. I know that GIMP has, for instance, a Perl interface, if I remember correctly, and something around Python, uh, if my memory serves well. So maybe I want to run a script. Uh, And then on top of that, um, I want to try to 
So it sounds like we are going to try to do a lot, but we can tackle this uh, in few parts. So the first thing that I need to learn or make sure if let's say we are starting completely from scratch, I need to make sure that I am able to run this OpenQA test uh, in my OpenQA instance. And, and the way to do that, uh, which is something that I should have done probably uh, earlier, is I am going to clone, I, won't, I am going to copy this thing and I'm going to tell uh, my OpenQA instance, so OpenQA clone job and that's it. Mm. So we don't have the secrets, so so normally when you do the bootstrap, you usually end up having the um, API keys created automatic automatically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this and then uh, do I have beam? Yes. So beam Now the question is, will this work? Nope, because mm, so let's do it like this because I don't want to make my life harder than it uh, needs to be. So open QA uh, clown job dash dash. Uh, I think it was. Let's see, what are the options? I need to pass API key, which is here, and then API secret. So let's go ahead and do that. The reason why I am trying to do it this way um, is because when we run clone job, it's going to download the assets. So uh, that means it's going to download um, a QCO image, and I don't want to have to go to the trouble, the trouble of setting up permissions uh, once again. So in this case, let me, uh, I can also, mm, so uh, I can also do this. Uh, And now, I wonder if I can do OpenQA clone job. Uh, now, if I do, if I do it like this right now um openqa will don't uh, the clone job uh, will also so this is put to snapshot but this job is depending on something else which is create hdd text mode and in reality uh, i don't want that um, also because it's going to don't know the wrong uh, the wrong image because what I want is a GNOME image. So and a put to snapshot is created from HDD text in text mode. So that's definitely going to end up in a horrible mistake. So let's go quickly and look for 
uh, if you want to do AI stuff, there are some uh, there are some tests as well. Uh, but right now, let's focus on extra text GNOME and uh, let me change this. And as I said, if I execute this, um, this is going to download. A, it's, it's not only just going to download the assets uh, of what I need, but also it will uh, trigger the dependency. So we are also testing OpenQA in OpenQA. So this is the same uh, script. So we are making sure that there is a test running and everything and so on. But right now, uh, if I do it like this, um, what is going to happen is that OpenQA will download the QCO image. Uh, OpenQA clone job will download the QCO image and it will download the ISO. And I don't want to download the ISO. Uh, and I also don't want to run the parent job. So one uh, small trick that we have, let me go up again. Uh, just for the record, I'm looking at the YouTube uh, chat if there is anybody there, so you can ask a question and I can address it in the, in the meantime. Um, now, there are a few things that you can do, like skip, a don uh, skip the download, ignore missing assets. You can clone the children and so on. Um, but in this case, um, what I want to do is skip chain depths. Um, And what this should do, first, not fail. Um, and for now, it's it looks like it's uh, doing uh, the job. So while that is happening, uh, let me say so. Let's say let's see what we have to do. We have to download and clone the test. Uh, okay. Now, uh, we are downloading already. Uh, this will do its work on its own. So by now we can shift the context a little bit and take a look at GIMP. Um, so what we want to do is uh, explore its command line options. So the first thing is, um, do I have, so it is already installed and I see that uh, there are already a few things. So normally what I do is I just call for help. Um, and I see that uh, aside from uh, showing, um, so aside from the version, which should display, uh, which should display the, the, the version, obviously, um, there are a couple of things that are interesting. So I can start a, a, a new instance. I can open an image as new. A, I can run it without user interface. So that one looks interesting, at least for now. Um, so let's say that we are here. So without user interface. Um, on the rest, we have do not load brushes and patterns, do not load any forms, do not show a splash screen. Um, maybe that, uh, that's something that I might want to uh, explore a little bit further. Uh, it looks like you can select to not have acceleration. Uh, that you can have a session RC file. So 
it it looks like you have quite few things so uh, i like uh, when it comes to testing i like a uh, fail fast uh, so the one that looks the most interesting is right now that a uh, fatal warnings so let's call it and uh so let's let's call it and let's see how it goes okay so it starts it seems cool um can i create something from an empty clipboard doesn't work what if the clipboard is just text so let me copy that create from clipboard uh, there is no image data so that's good because it's recognizing the you know image stuff um, so this is normally what you will do when you are trying to uh, explore or or trying to figure out how something works uh, so in this case let's create an image and say hi and now let's save it mm, normally they have this format uh, let's uh, stay there for for now and I will come to that image in a second. So that's that's kind of the first part. Let me see if my test finished downloading and I have, uh, as you can see, it downloaded all of the assets and I was mistaken. It's also going to download the ISO. If you don't want to download extra assets, in this case, you can say, for instance, ISO equals a uh, like this so uh, and that will make sure that there is no ISO there um, but right now I want to know if this is running so I go to localhost and there is my test apparently running So there, there are some failures from the back end, but uh, let's see. So there we are. Uh, my test is running and it's going to execute all of these modules. Uh, in this case, let me log in again. Let me stop the test. And what I want to do right now, when the computer comes back to life, if it does, so I tend to break things, uh, usually either live or um, But yeah, right now it looks like it's frozen. Maybe uh, we will have to bear for a second. Or I can just switch to my perfect. So uh, now that we're here, we know that it runs. We know that uh, we have different things. So the next thing that I want to see is what happens if I run sorry uh, there was this option that is uh, was the dash s so no splash uh, and then what happens if I call it with version so with dash v with dash v and I get the version, so we know that works. 
um, maybe we can, after trying out without the dash V, uh, we can see what goes uh, goes on. So as you see, no splash. Um, so we are pretty much there. So what we can do as a next step is come back here and we are going to find, so we are going to find where our tests are, what that is bar, usually it's bar, lib, open QA, a share tests. Then uh, if you look there, there is usually uh, OpenSUSE and SLEE. So you just go to OpenSUSE and there um, we can figure out where is the test, the GIMP test. Um, so we know that the test, the, mo the name of the test module is GIMP, but we don't know what it is exactly. So uh, just when just whenever you see this folder here, you you will know that it's a, a directory. So when you take a look at the structure, um, you have a couple of things. So we have the data directory and documentations. There is sleep. A products a schedule. So in schedule, you usually find YAML files. Um, that go along with the declarative schedule thing. So you can read that uh, file. But in this case, we are going to take a look into tests. So uh, if I go Vim uh, tests, uh, then X11, because that's a uh, so usually the, the mapping is we have everything under tests is displayed uh, as a group here. So we have something for locale, we have something uh, that is console somewhere. Uh, and then we have other, uh, other differentiations, but um, let's not get there right now. So right, uh, let me open GIMP and now, I want to, I, I say that I wanted to add a version check or rather have OpenQA to display something about the version. Uh, and then there are many options how you can approach how to write a test uh, and uh, try to get information or on, on how does the API work. Um, and in this case, uh, what you can do is to start. Uh, so in, in the in the in the intro uh, introductory guide, um, there are a couple of things. There is the bootstrapping uh, system requirements, and then there is a part uh, called where to now. Uh, so you can take a look at the getting. Uh, at the getting started and then it has some information on how to add images, ISOs, sorry. Uh, and then there is the user's guide, which is a bit more in depth on how does the configuration works and everything. Uh, variable expansion. So you have quite a lot of documentations. I know that it's not the best, um, but it's there and uh, it kind of serves the purpose. But right now, because I know that we have it, I'm going to take a look at the API. And because I know that from Selenium, from uh, Cucumber, Advoca uh, Avocado, uh, Robot Framework, there are things that are usually called assert. Maybe there is a, a maybe there is a function or something that I can use to to run a command, because if I take a look here, there is nothing uh, that tells me uh, I'm going to run a command. So when we start to look here, 
you have multiple things but this part here so keyboard support so i see that i can send keys hold release and then i can type screen type string and then uh, i can also uh, enter a command so let's try uh, and in order to do that i see that it's um, enter cmd and then there is a string now what i see here is that a uh, so let's add here enter cmd and then let's verify once again that my gimp dash v will work and um, it will show uh, all of the stuff but because i know how more or less how consoles work uh, i know that if i do echo of this i will get the exit code and that's good if i want to check that everything works mm. but maybe i um, uh, let's say that I am the GIMP package maintainer and I don't know. So GIMP was configured with all of these flags and perhaps I want to check that the version uh, that this was compiled with a uh, dash O3 um, just to wreak havoc. So we can do enter CMD and we do it like this so what that is going to do is effectively start a command and let's see uh, how that will work and we're almost at the end there is um, i'm not going to go too too deep um, so remember that we use clone job Yes, I use clone job, but now my command is gone. So I'm going to basically do the same thing. Uh, but in this case, um, I don't need the line altogether because what I can say is since I have the test already locally, um, I can say, you know what? Um, clone this job, and one trick, one nice, one neat thing that you can do with OpenQA is that you can manipulate the schedule. Uh, and it looks like this. So, uh, and this is a trick that I normally want to use. So, let's put to desktop and run the game part so put to desktop and then uh, tests x11 gimp now let's see how does that look like as you can see it says downloading but the assets don't really need to be downloaded. Uh, now, let's see if it's running. I see that my system is booting. Everything looks perfect. Um, so while this, uh, while this works, uh, and the system boots keep in mind that if you are using a uh, open QA within a VM you will be basically having two levels of virtualization so make sure that uh, you are not finding uh, false positives 
sorry, false negatives because I don't know something is trolling you. Um, and that's one of the reasons maybe why the Firefox and basically this system is a bit unresponsive. I think I have something like uh, four gigabytes of RAM. Um, Uh, yeah, and as the um, OpenSUSE account is sharing, I'm, I'm having basically uh, uh, access to the stream, so I will I can see the the comments if there is if there are questions from the audience. Um, let's see. So at this point, I know that this test will fail um, because I called uh, Enter CMD and uh, when we were te when we were looking at the test module, it was just uh, going through the. Um, so it was just uh, starting an X11 application and uh, it ran the uh, cannot buffer operation. This is good. So all this is telling me that my test is finished. And as you see here, uh, something went wrong. It says incomplete. And I don't know why. Mm. So these are the kind of things that happen to you when you are doing things live. Yeah, I think that uh, the oh, yeah, um, out of memory uh, killer from yeah the um, memory killer from the kernel just took over. Um, in any case, we can still move on. Uh, but what I was saying is that. Uh, this test is basically making sure that GIMP is installed. It's um, starting the um, X so X11 program is basically uh, st it starts so it starts from here uh, and it calls. Uh, so this is the part where ensure install is making sure that GIMP is actually installed and then start X11 program is basically pressing Alt F2 and then uh, typing the actual command. Um, now, because it will not have where to, where to, uh, where to do anything, basically, uh, one thing that I need to do So bin uh, tests x11 and then let's go for GIMP again. Uh, so I'm just going to start this with a uh, xterm. And I just want to check that Xterm is something that, that actually exists, even if this is, uh, yeah, it should work. So, uh, what this is going to, uh, what this is gonna do is that once uh, X11 starts, uh, OpenQA should be should be typing enter CMD. Sorry. OpenQA should be uh, typing uh, GIMP v, and in the meantime, let me close here. Let me trigger again. Or let me close as much as possible here. So yeah, 
this guy guy uh, and let's see um, let me check for a second in my computer if it's Let's see if this is running. Mm. Let's go to localhost again. So we see that our test is at least starting to run. Again, because I'm using a nested virtualization, there are definitely unintended side effects. Um, so we still have to wait uh, just a little bit uh, before this finishes. So our system is booting. It got to the desktop. And now let's uh, basically cross our fingers and hope that not only it opens GIMP, but that it also uh, calls uh, GIMP with the dash V. So, and in the meantime, there is something that we call the developer mode. It allows you to pause the test execution. Uh, you can pause it at the, uh, at the execution of a certain module. You can also uh, ask uh, basically OpenQA to stop uh, at certain places. And you can even um, uh, interrupt the next command. So, and once the system is, uh, the system under test is paused, you basically can take, uh, take over, connect via VMC, and then interact with the uh, with the live system. Um, so right now, this is the Ensure installed, most likely. Uh, it takes a bit to finish. Mm. So it is already installed. Now, Hey, Santi, I'm not sure if uh, if uh, they could hear what you just said. I saw your lips moving, but uh, didn't actually, couldn't hear you.
Hey, Santi. Um, it looks like the, they can't hear you. I don't know if you can um, um, rejoin real quick and go over the last uh, or, or check your audio. Maybe doesn't look like you're muted. Right. Um, yeah, we'll get we'll get Santi back up here and so he can continue on. Um, like just a couple things while well, while he's trying to reconnect. Um, you can uh, see some of these talks at the Open SUSE conference or some various different things that'll be taking place there. Um, let's see. Can you hear me now? Can I get it? I can hear you now. Yep, can hear you now. Probably cut off, uh, I would say, maybe the past three minutes. It was sort of the audio dropped. Mm. So if any of you have a question, uh, please put it in the comments. Also on Twitter as well. If you uh, want to come and check out some of the things that we have going on with OpenQA, as well as a bunch of other talks, just look at uh, go to events.opensuse.org and you could check out uh, uh, or register for the conference. It's going to be happening in June in Nuremberg. We'll also be having an event in Berlin uh, that'll be taking place on the last day of uh, SUSECon. That'll be also in June, about a week before conference. So I think we're getting a good signal here. Okay, there we go. Can you hear me now? Can hear you now. Okay, finally. Um, let's see. Uh, maybe we can get that do over later on, but uh, or on during the open source conference. I promise other type of problems. <laughs> um, so now where I was. Um, Yes. So uh, now the thing is that um, and, and where I was basically is so I know that my test is failing. Uh, what we're getting here is basically um, for certain type of tests, uh, we execute something that we call post fail and post run hooks. Uh, in this case, um, the post a run hook is looking for is actually trying to make sure that as a, a test developer I left the house clean so it's expecting me to close uh, the x11 uh, per, uh, sorry it's expecting me to leave the desktop uh, on the generate desktop so let's go ahead and do that as a first thing and then one thing that we said or that I said is that uh, I wanted to see or I I rather I wanted to make sure that uh, I don't know uh, that the developer or that even myself um, compiled uh, the game package with certain uh, with certain flags um so it looks like there are quite a few languages here um and i don't know let's say let's uh let's pick up 
uh, enable offload default tab. And what we have, so in the, in the test API, we have a couple of things that can help us to get there. So if I head over again to open.qa and then uh, there is the test API. Mm, so I don't want to look at, uh, I don't want to access variables. I want to uh, run a script because basically what I would like to do is something uh, like uh, gim-v and then pass, um, do something like grep. Ah. So if I say O2, uh, so if I, So if I say O2, um, I get this color. So it, it finds it, but if I go with O3, um, it doesn't find anything. So what I want to do is uh, try to do the same thing with OpenQA. So let's see. Um, looks like assert script run. Sounds like a good idea. Um, we have other things like uh, validate script output. So the difference there is that a search script run uh, will basically uh, die if something fails. Um, uh, and this is basically expecting an exit call of um, whatever, basically. Uh, and with the other one, validate script output, uh, you can pass a peril. Uh, 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 so basically what it happens here is that this is executed in the context of the system under test, and this part here is executed uh, in the test code itself. So for now, uh, let's just use um, search script run. So let's go ahead do that and for this I want to say um, so I don't need to use the enter CMD again uh, anymore but I do need to do a uh, assert script run and then I have to remember that uh, so I'm on, I'm not in bash, I'm in Perl right now. So uh, if I want to, uh, if I want to check this, um, I need to, in this case, it might look a bit ugly. You can do it in much nicer ways. Uh, and we were saying, O2. And uh, uh, Leon is asking, it's OpenQA, and yes, this is, so today's OpenQA. Um, now, I, again, I modified my test. I don't really need to clone it again. Uh, what I actually need to do is just come here and uh, restart. Uh, I'm looking at the previous execution. It took something like uh, four minutes. Um, so during that time, I can, uh, if somebody has questions, I can take some. Uh, otherwise, uh, we can dwell a little bit into the different things that we can do through the console. Um, because it's not just that we, uh, that you can, you know, do a local development and then do clone job all the time. Um, 
among the few th that you can do is uh, so we have clone custom git ref spec and what this script does is it allows you to um, clone a job from a github branch so uh, and that helps you basically to do what we call verification runs um, okay so the system is a bit loaded so i can uh, switch screens for a second mm, let me uh, present share screen uh, so let's go here for a moment and let's go into openqa sorry So where I'm going with the command that I was showing is that normally when whenever we are uh, trying to uh, you know do some uh, test development, uh, there are moments when we are uh, in the need of creating a verification run because maybe uh, there is some uh, fix, uh, like for instance uh, teams. Uh, uh, just added one uh, and you see that um, he just ran so this is uh, whenever you see that the name is uh, starting to look like OS Auto Inks this to say and then it's a very long name you know it's uh, basically coming from there um, I actually blogged about it uh, some time ago uh, Mm, there is another about uh, testing kernels, but right now, uh, how to test things. Uh, maybe Doug can uh, take it from. Uh, I will share it in a second. Um, I think that my uh, test is already finished. Uh, so let's cross the fingers and hope that it died. So it died prematurely. So again, because I'm using a, um, because this is a, a nested virtualization, I'm ending up in a situation where my system is basically running out of, uh, a, out of resources. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, maybe Doug uh, can share also the link that it's on the um, StreamYard chart. Mm. Now, uh, is all of your tumble with ISO um, automatically tested? Um, with OpenQA first, I saw it's released uh, so fast. Uh, Leon, yes, uh, we do test um, everything with OpenQA. Uh, let me change the screens again for a second. Uh, window. You were going, uh, going for the... Um the uh, GitHub one, right? Uh, I assume. Sorry. I think you were you wanted the GitHub OpenQA link, right? Uh, I want the link. So this is the the project, yes, and then there is the uh, link that I shared in the private chat. But um, we ah. can add that to the. Um, ah, okay. No because problem. Because it's quite long. So uh, now uh, to take a look on how Tumbleweed is working and uh, tested. Uh, to go a little bit into um, the answer. So basically, yes, we are testing every single snapshot 
uh, is being tested in OpenQA. Um, we have quite a, a, quite a big set of tests for uh, different uh, with different intents. Um, I don't remember if for OpenSUSE we also have the Raspberry Pi for Tumbleweed, sorry, uh, also test enabled. Uh, our, hmm, I think that they might not be enabled anymore. Um, Raspberry Pi. So they uh, used to be in uh, the AOS at some point, uh, but we might have disabled them uh, for different reasons. Um, so my so my test, my OpenQA test keeps failing, but that's again on my on me. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's. Uh, that's more or less it, I think. Mm. So Santi, there's a there's a question that kind of came in here. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see it from Leon. Mm -hmm. uh, is all of your uh, tumble with ISOs automatically tested with OpenQA first? Yes. So that's that's what I was going through. Like uh, we have um, so every build uh, that we make of OpenQA. Uh, sorry, every build of Tumbleweed uh, goes through OpenQA first before before being published, uh, and that is what helps us uh, get, um, uh, you know, publish uh, uh, depending on on the on the release cycle that uh, Dimstar, who is the release manager, wants to have. Um, you see that we have something around uh, 300 tests, uh, more or less. And I think we might have lost. Sorry. Oh, oh, okay, you're back. <laughs> lost audio for a second. Oh man, this uh, <laughs> today is not my day. But anyway, <laughs> the. Uh, that is the part of uh so what what i was saying is uh we get every build uh, that is basically being tested but even before that the the changes um don't enough but basically um, we have uh, these things called staging uh, which exactly this is what I'm looking for so we have these things called staging which allow the package maintainers to iterate fast even faster so these things uh, are meant to test uh, uh, small changes. So every submit request uh, goes first through the um, uh, staging areas of uh, the open build service, and then from there they are being triggered and synced into uh, OpenQA uh, through some scripts that we have over there. Um, let me see. Do we have any other questions there? Okay. So um, I think that for the most part, that's a, that's kind of it. Um, again, my, the test that I'm trying to run locally, it keeps failing. Uh, but that's, again, a side effect of nested virtualization. So don't try it at home. <laughs> Uh, also because it's, it's fairly unsupported. Mm. But maybe we could start to wrap things up, Doc. I'm not sure. No, that's that's good. I appreciate it, Santi. Thank you for uh, thank you for providing a, a thorough and, and 
and very good uh, workshop. So, and uh, so, looks like we did have a lot of followers on on uh, Twitter, a lot more so than YouTube. But yeah, okay, excellent. that's that's great. Um, I'm going to leave the OpenQA Twitter, uh, or I'm, I'm not sure if you linked it. Uh, I'm going to write it on the YouTube chat at least. Uh, so it's now x.com openqa uh, hq which if i manage to be fast enough uh, so this is our uh, twitter account uh, has failed to post open source of course so i'm just pasting it on the internal chat and then um that cool. we can uh, share it as a well, last thing will do um, Thank you. There is going to be a, another, a, a deeper dive during the OpenSUSE conference um, as well. Uh, and I do hope to uh, maybe at a later point uh, have something a bit better prepared to uh, avoid the kind of situations that I'm seeing today. Because that also was kind of exploratory for me. Um, but in any case, uh, if you have questions, doubts, regular expressions, just uh, tweet us. Uh, sometimes I hang out in the OpenQA Matrix uh, channel as well. Uh, but then there are others that can help you get started as well. Thank cool. you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Thanks, everyone. Bye.